Oke, okay, nanti soal start mulai doa ini. Start the doa ini. Can I show you the demos of higher functions? Before that, I will show you some other tricks or syntax of functions uh, which can be used with start. Right, so uh, let's define a function called print, which take uh, two integer values for A and B, right? And then I print those on the top. First I print A. And then I print uh, B on the term. Simple function. So as you know, when we call this function like ten men fifteen, uh, print in prin and um, print in. So it will print first it print A and then second part 15 assigned to B and print B. So Scala has the method we can uh, name the parameters. For example, I can say 10 is actually B and then 15 is A. So you see now 10 is assigned to B even though we pass as the first parameter assigned to B. So usually first parameter assigned to the uh, first, second parameter assigned to the second argument. But if I name that this is the B, so actually the it assigned to the correct argument. It ignore the order. So as you see when I call like that, it B has taken assigned to B. So that's why I get 10 and 15 as assigned to it. Right. So that concept call it as pass the uh, name uh, name arguments. Now skull has feature of pass variable arguments. In order to demonstrate that I write a function for maybe add number which can be more than one integer parameter. So for that I put x in star. And then I define the body, let's say variable called total equal zero. And I write a simple for loop and bring all x to y. And then Add total to I and design back to the total. Sorry, where did this be? Add none, then I assign total zero, then give four, and then four. one x to i then say total x equal i sorry i made a follow i mistake this is double zero then i say four this arrow is yes plus then sign and dash and then return to right. Then I can call at number. So you see with single parameter. It's one. So I can give multiple parameters like that. So it returns addition of all the data which passes. 
through this function. So this phenomenon or this concept is called variable arguments in this part. So how do you define? After the time it stops. So actually it applies only for the last last parameter and we can give multiple types of last parameter as arguments. Right. Similarly, there is a concept called available or let's call by name a function. So in order to demonstrate that I write a function called the which take a t. This t is actually a function name which will turn a variable or we say t colon and it says it's return law. Some function which returns a law is the t. So we pass that uh, function. Maybe you can call any name for that function. Say function network like that. So yeah, what I would just do call that function. So I say that when I call the function f1. I pass the function to be limited and called. Right then. And there is a function called delay. Let's say I have a function called time now. Take any input and it returns system nano nano time is nano second. Actually, this function, as you see, is not a your function because when I call it again and again, it returns different of any function, not a pure function. Right. So I now pass that time function to delay. Like that. I say delay time. So the delayed function name is delay D. -D. Delay. So you see, delay time. So then this call it as called by name. I pass the name of this time function to the delay function here. So that take the name of that time function and then call the time function inside the delay function. So it frames the time in the nanosecond. So this delayed function actually call it as higher order function because it take a function as a input parameter. We will discuss later on. Right. So this concept here is called it as called by name. Right. Scala also give an opportunity uh, to define uh, default parameters. I will demonstrate that, let's say I create a function for add with x integer time, and I give a default value of three for that. And I create a variable y that also int default value is maybe nine. And then function just add x and y. Right. Let me call add function without any parameter. So if I call that, you see, it take two default values and execute the function. They add 3 and 19, 12. So it returns the answer 12. So maybe I can call add function with one parameter like that. So it returns 10 because first parameter is assigned to x and here x for writing the default value and one is add to 9, that is 10. Again, it can go with two parameters like that, right? So when you pass the argument to a function, there is a possibility to view default values. Okay, these are the few basic things that I want to show you. Uh, and I have demonstrated recursion functions previously. Now let's see how we can define 
anonymous function. So we have defined that function here. So the same function we can create as anonymous like right here. So there we see we need to create a value which assign this function pointer or function reference, what we call it as. So maybe I create a function called add. So I assign this function to the add. So in order to do that, I have to create a function which take two parameters like that. So you see I'm not giving a name for the function. Here we have to give a name like if add, but anonymous function may not have the name. It tells just the list of the parameters it will take like that. After that, it say, please transform this parameter. So this is arrow sign, say transform this parameter to x plus y. So it is a function which call it as add. This is Faulkner's signature and this is the definition. We can call like here, yeah, here now, we'll add two numbers. So this is actually now a value. So I can assign that value to something else as well. So maybe I say where I get variable for x, then I say kind of it's a, uh, a function. Uh, maybe I can create a variable of x function like that maybe. If I can say if x is integer, uh, uh, y is integer, and I can say that x is uh, the x multiplied by like that. So then I pass x to 3, multiply to get. Doesn't matter very low value. So usually we use value because it's fixed. So we pass that function reference or store that function reference in that, like that. So this is a function declaration. There are no name for that. And then multiply these two. This is the returning part, body of that. Usually it tells, take this parameters and transform it to this function or calculation. So that's how we can create what we call it as anonymous function. So maybe I can create an anonymous function called even number or is even. So I can create then value or is even and this take uh, x as input x as input and transform that to x mod 2 equal 2 right it returns the function it creates a function return good and well so when I call is even with 9, return false, with 10, return true. That's why. Sorry, I, I made a mistake. It is not true, right? So it should be, you see, right? Now my C1 function is correct. When I call it 9, it returns false. When I call it 10, it returns true. So this is what we call it as anonymous function. So there are no depth. So this is my input parameter. And this is tells about the returning value for the function body. Similarly, we can create anonymous function. By creating those anonymous functions, we can pass that anonymous function to some other functions. So let's say there is a function called hello. hello. 
that take a, a anonymous function for say all yeah the anonymous function type of the anonymous function is basically input type is empty and output is say nothing unit right so then what it tells transform this should be hello then what it transform is as print all so maybe i say uh, i just call it all f so this is function value my input type is a function and it transform to this basically in the body all the function we type pass so now let's define some function uh, all it one right it is it has a empty function inputs and and then it returns uh, empty function inputs which returns uh, maybe I say with just print no no inputs uh, we just print ln then there is a function called h2 that print hello uses both are anonymous functions so no input and do this no inputs do that so there are two anonymous functions those functions values assigned to value called h1 and h2 so then there is a function called hello so i call now hello one you see it print hello also so similarly i can call hello with h2 because this h1 h1 map to this function signature so i can pass this function h1 to this then this is function h2 so i can pass s2 to this hello callback because this callback whatever this function definition say empty function return empty so this is an empty function empty input function which returns nothing so this is also empty input function which returns nothing so these function definitions basically here so this function definition here matches this so i can pass h1 y dash 2 to hello if i pass h1 to hello it calls this and i pass h2 to hello it calls this and i pass h2 which goes to there and call this so i get hello ucs so this function is called it said call it as my order function Similarly, maybe I can create two functions, anonymous functions uh, called uh, like add, which takes two inputs like that. It's an one that transform to x plus one. 
there's a function f which takes x and sorry y and transform to x plus y. Similarly, I have a function, sorry, most function for my actually it multiply x y. So this function definition assigned to one. Right. So I can then create a high order function. Maybe call f. Okay. Which take a function input. Uh, maybe say function parameter p. So I then I have to tell is which type of function. So p is a function which take two integers and input which transform to the integer of so z is take this function f1 and two other input parameters called x and y. Like that. Then what I return out of that is P X Y. So we take a function point and two integer points and y, and then call this function P with these two x and y. So that is my function f. So when I call f with f now and two variables. Because this f right? one, two, three parameters. So that's it. That had the two numbers. So when you call it with multiple, it returns multiplication of these two variables. Three multiplied four. Right? 12. So this is addition, this is multiplication. So how that identify it using this function point. So I pass this function value to the f and it take it here and apply it here. So this f call it as I order function. Right. Similarly, I can define a high order function which uh, depends on the results on the terminal level. So, like here, I can change my f1 function not to return this, maybe to train the answer like that. Right. So then return value is u in that is nothing. So then I call the f f add it return seven. Then I call f one it return it print two in. So they are in printing seven and two in. Here it return the values. Right. So this is the first definition. So this is the redefinition of f. Okay? So those function f is a basically high order function. Right. So let's say I want to write a function which uh, add sequence of numbers. So I write a function for some then Which take uh, another function called a, which take input and transform that input to in input integer and then transform that into the integer. Right? 
and then two other parameters to x and y. So this function I want to add numbers from x to y. So then it returns I say integer addition under this condition. If x uh, greater than x uh, kind of x uh, greater than y greater than y it returns zero else this else it returns after applying x value to it it returns the value of function f plus the same sum function if x plus one y Hmm. Int x, int x, x plus if x is an integer, y is also an integer, return the integer if x greater than one. Okay, I need to that's the function f as well because this f function has three inputs first input is a function two are other variables so here i have to say f x plus y x, x one x plus one and one right so this is a function f so then i can pass multiple function as f so maybe i say uh, value Maybe say a function, uh, let's say it is uh, maybe called A. It transform int to Take the integer from x and transform that to x. No actions. So then I call sum with function a and one to three. See it add numbers from one to three. One add two three add three six. So when I say four, it's return ten. This a is the generic function. So if I want to get sum of the squares, so I can define a function called maybe s square, which take x and return x multiply x. Then I can pass this s to this summation function now, like that. Not exactly s. So you see, now it return third. Why? It add one multiply one, that is one. So two multiply two, four. Two, four add one is five. So three multiply three is nine. Five and nine is 14. Then four multiply four is 16. Then add 14 to the 16 is third. Sum of square. So I can use the same function to add for the summation of cubes. So for that, I need some function called cube defined here. Anonymous function called cube defined here. Cube is equal to x multiply x, like that. And then that cube function can pass now, cube function, call it as c, and pass to sum. So it returns addition of cubes from one to four. So you see the advantage of higher order functions. You can create a generic functions and pass other functions that and to do some operations. So that is how higher order functions work. 
high order functions can take multiple functions as input values if you wish. So maybe I get uh, high order functions which take uh, two inputs. They are both are functions. So let's say I have create uh, this function for can actually take two functions for f1 as its input value. First function f1 takes two integers, comes from two integers. Second function also will as f2 take two integers. And take other two integers for x and y. Then entirely this function has four input values. What that return is the apply function f1 to the input parameter x and y, and then function f2 to the comma, then function f to the input parameter x and y. So, so here we are using an anonymous function, so we need to transform it. So one bracket is missing. There is a function can using defined as a function with two input parameters and it returns two integers. So this function take this is first parameter, this is second input parameter of L function, and this is third parameter, this fourth parameter. First two are the functions, second two are the integers. And that data transform to a tube. That's two integers. Right. And how can we call L? So you know we define two functions called add and multiply somewhere. So I call them add and multiple functions which I define with uh, maybe five and six to L function. Previously, I had defined two function call and then multiply, so that I passes this two two function can. So you see, do then calculation. First, add function return the addition of these two numbers that is eleven, and multiply function will return the multiplication of these two numbers that is thirty. So you see, this cal function take two functions as input values. So like that, functions can take one function, two or multiple functions as input parameters. Right. So any function we take, a function has input parameter for it has I order function. Similarly, any function which returns the function as output parameter, output value, is also call it as I order function. So that particular concept is called curry. So in order to demonstrate the curry, maybe I will create a function for add, which uh, usually take two integer parameters like Yes, x and y. So we already defined that to remember my add function. So it's look like this now. So how do I call it? It's two input parameter. Right. So the same add function can define like that. So I say add now, take uh, one input parameter, returns 
function, another function which take one input. So I can open this event. So I take the one input parameter, which transform to another function, which take another input parameter for y, and then it transforms to the x plus y. This concept is called as after, after that, how can I call this add now? Can I call like that? No. So, the, so my function now only take one parameter. So I have to call like that. So one after other. So if I call like that, what well it returns a function. Second function. Right? So in the second function, I can pass the second parameter. Then these two will add it together. So let's say there is, I want to add two numbers together and then multiply the third number, something like that. So then I can further test like another parameter like that. And then I say x plus y multiply this. Like that. So there we need to call it like here. So 3 plus 10 is 13, multiply 2 is 22. So this concept is called as hurry function, return a function, and it return a function, and it return a result. Right. So maybe some other example, maybe I create, uh, so other example, I create some function, you remember, on the uh, final price, price, Price is uh, maybe price, product price, uh, final price take uh, input for maybe product price is the input, integer input, and say it's return function. Right? That function as uh, input for that maybe I say those values are maybe I say double because they have decimal numbers double so it's a double and that Returns another function which apply maybe service star. Returns double. Then it is. That price plus price into that divided hundred plus price into service charge that price might be a service charge uh, so this is service charge let's say C eight C eight 
So this is my final price. See final prices, product prices level, it transform the function form back. It is double, and then it transforms the function for service charge. That's also double. It returns product price. You take the back and take the product price. So, no distinction. Service charge no. S E R V I C S S S E R V I C right. So I define now service charge function. One function apply to the other, apply to the other. So we can now for this final price and say my product price is thousand rupees. Then I say rect is 10,000 and service charge is 5%. So the product price is 1,950. If uh, service charge is changed to maybe 10%, change that 1,000. So similarly, I can do like that if I wish. I will say I create a value for my right. Apply if uh, basically time rise in 2000. So that returns actually a function as you see. So that function is applied to a apply. So then I can create maybe service charge at and it is really heavy now i can apply that apply 10 percent it returns a function for the service charge then I can create a new call price. Price is service and apply price. You see, that is price. So I can, so my product price is 100, then that is 10, service is 5. So if service charge is changed to 10, so it's changed. So maybe I can say my product price now. Uh, I call my rat apply function thousand rupees. So then I apply the rat. Uh, with this ten percent rat, and then I apply five percent service charge. And then you see it returns me the final price. So like that I can do I can do it one by one. One all the return function, it returns another function, it returns the final value. Well I can call that function after the function like this final price is black price, fat, and third side. So this concept, call it as curry. So there are all the functions take only one input and return value. That is, call it as curry. So when you do curry, 
So those functions like each and every functions here are basically high order functions because they take some input and return a function as the output. So you see, with functional programming language, and by using high order functions, we can do various nice things and simplify our program into a very simple few lines. And whatever we return, or whatever we get, whatever our answer is correct. So this is a debug, straightforward. And we could call functions each other and solve the problem we want. Okay, I think with that demo you understand how we can define anonymous functions or the lambda functions. And also you understand how to create high order functions. Right. <clears throat>